Okay, oh, David good. and M. This is so cute. Good. Oh, we're on. We're, we're on? live. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I meant what I said. That this is really sweet. Um. Hello, if anyone's streaming this, my name is Maud Garrett. She's I don't from think we don't have any viewers. Just, just give us one second to read the link. I can, yeah, we got one viewer. Huh. Just, I'm in the, I'm in the zone though. Just, just, just hold on, because we haven't given anyone a link. No one knows how to get to it yet. <laughs> I don't even know how to get to it. I'm trying to get to it like secretly. Okay, I found it. I found it. Live control room. Oh my god, what does that mean? Oh my god, I'm gonna keep okay, getting it. Okay, I found it. the link. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll oh, yeah, I'll see it. I'll see it. You found the link? Yeah. Oh, sick. Okay. Oh. Are you doing Twitter or do you want me to do Twitter? I'm, I'm logged into my Twitter. Um, okay, I'll do Geekbomb Twitter. Twitter. You do that. I will, um, how do I, God, how do I do this? Analytics. Oh, we have one, one concurrent viewer, but I don't know if that's actually real. Please correct the frame rate. I don't know how to do that. Oh, good. Apparently, well, apparently it's going, but I. Oh yeah, I'm watching us live. Oh, cool. I'm gonna close that. That's... Okay, so let's share the link. Yep. Oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to actually stream it live to watch the comments, right? Oh uh, yeah, maybe. Okay, sharing the link. That will be Sweet. Um, and we're doing. Okay, I'll add them to the thing now. Oh goodness gracious me. I like sitting here with my finger on the ready to hit the retweet button. I'm getting ding noises. I'm inviting people to the call. Okay, sweet. Bing, what is that noise? Why am I getting that ding? Shit. People are joining the call. Yay. Oh, that's what that is! Ha <laughs> ha! That's awesome! That's Alright guys, this is up and happening. Yeah. We're going to get this show on the road? Let's do it. I'm just going to retweet it on my phone. Hold up, people. I know this is very unprofessional of me. All right. This is exciting. Bing, bing, bing. I love bing. hearing that bing sound. <laughs> more people join. Hey, guys. <laughs> ah, this is awesome. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so how, do, where does it say how many people are listening, watching? Is it? Uh, five, we've got five viewers. Hello, five viewers. I just ate dinner. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lady. Um, for those who don't know, I know pretty much everyone here though. Hi, Amy. How are you? I'm looking at you, Patrick, in the background. Um, my name is Maud Garrett. We are commencing our very first book club for Geek Bomb. Woo! Yay! <laughs> if you don't know the book by now, you're probably not going to know anything that we're talking about. It is Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. We've all read it, I hope. Yep. Several times. That's good. Yeah. Um, so we need so like the one person that didn't finish it or something. Yeah. yeah, well, I lent it to my roommate, and she's read, like, the first chapter, and she said, so far, so good, even though she's not a gamer. She just gave me the thumbs up then on your mate. <laughs> Get your tits away, love. God damn it. Um, um, <laughs> don't you wish you lived here. So basically, we're going to go through the points of the book, what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, the character development, the themes in the book, and we're going to come up with an overall rating system, and what we can all agree on is a fair mark out of... What, out of 10, out of 100, out of 5? I think 10. Yeah. yeah, okay. Out of 10, 10 bombs. And like the fuse could be half lit, the bomb could explode, you never know. <laughs> yep. So what we're going to do now, if you are watching and you have emailed us in, email us, um, it's a Gmail account, and if you have a Gmail account, you can join in the chat like Emmy has. Email us geekbombshells at gmail.com, and then we can add your email into it, and then we can all join in the discussions. All right. 
Tara, Shona, introduce yourselves. Okay, Tara. well, I think you oh, just Shona. introduced us for for us. Um, yeah, so I'm Shona. Hi. That's a fantastic introduction. <laughs> we all have an intro. Come on. You want to elaborate a little bit more? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know um, what else to say. I mean, I love reading, so I'm really excited to be doing this book club. Um, I love fantasy, science fiction. I've been reading pretty much my whole life, and I love to write as well. Um, so maybe like my dream would be one day if there's a similar book club discussing one of my books, that would be really amazing. <laughs> but in the meantime, I'm just going to have a lot of fun talking with you guys about books. Beautiful. Tara? Yep. Hey, I'm Tara. I also love reading books. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. But I don't know. I've grown up reading fantasy from before I can even remember. I was copying whatever my sister was reading, and she was always reading things a bit, probably a bit above my level. But I went with it anyway. Um, so I haven't stopped. And yeah, I, I don't want to necessarily be a writer, but I'm always going to be reading. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, I guess the story with me. Sorry, I'm eating dinner. It's very late here. It's quarter past. Twelve in LA at the moment. Saturday night. Okay. You'll be up late on a Saturday night. <laughs> How pathetic. Um, I never liked reading during high school. Um, the only books that I were reading were the ones that I was forced to read, and if you're forced to do something, you don't enjoy it. And then as soon as I left school, um, my mum inundated me with a series of books. Um, to paint a picture, we have a giant like in the living room, a giant wall, and mum built a bookcase over the entire wall and just left a space for the television in the middle. And she recently color coded it. I was going to take a photo and I didn't. So she's uh. a bit of a nut with the books. Um, I love reading fantasy more than sci-fi, but I'm giving it a nudge. Tara, you've disappeared. There you go. Um, so yeah, we're just going to do a book a month at the moment. Ready Player One, I read it in April of this year, and I read it in about two and a bit days. I just smashed it out, but Tara beat me. Thank you. <laughs> Did it in one it day? Did take, it did take most of the night to get through, but yeah. 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 But it's pretty fast-paced, and I think it's really hard to put down, too, so I can totally understand why everyone would be reading it so quickly. Hey, Emmy, when did you read it? You're up. Hello. Uh, two days ago, actually. What? <laughs> yeah. I kept well, forgetting okay. to download it, and I rang my local bookshop because I prefer to buy my books in the flesh but they didn't have a copy. It was going to take a week, so I bought it online. Okay. How do you find reading online as opposed to turning a real page? I hate it, but <laughs> sometimes you gotta. <laughs> All right. We've got someone else joining the call. Yeah, I'm just okay. trying to invite Crystal. It's just she's struggling. This is our first one, so the technology is riveting. Um, if you are watching and you want to ask or talk or say anything at all, we do have our Facebook page and our Twitter page both active. Or on YouTube as well. I'm reading that there's one comment on YouTube from Chris. Already? Yeah. What's this one then? I'm not I'm not there. Whoops. Maybe I'm not all over it. Bugger everything. <laughs> but I'm I'm I'll monitor the, the Facebook. Yeah, I've got and YouTube. The Twitter. Up, so you take those. Okay. Okay, so let's start off with the book. We figured out that it's an easy read, that we can read it quite quickly, that it's a bit of a no-brainer. I guess the themes, and that's what's going to stand out the most, is that this has literally been called... Where is it? I read it somewhere. Oh, that's cool. Uh, while that happens. Um, Ready Player One is nostalgia porn. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it's not really for me. I don't remember anything from that long ago. Yeah, I was about I to say... <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. Like, when I heard I had a lot of references from the 80s, I got really excited. Um, but I was born in the 80s, so a lot of my memories are, like, from cartoons and things like that. So I think I the book I was... I only about 40%, not even. I had to yeah. look it all up. Hey, uh, there she is. Yeah. She's joined. Hey! Yeah. How was that? Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, Google didn't want to give me my notifications. Uh, oh, I'm yeah, okay. glad you could join us anyway. Thank you. Let's have a look at the... 
question. Here we are. Books are good. <laughs> oh, wait. Diana's watching. Yeah, she texted me that she was watching. I don't know why she's not watching. Why didn't she come in? I'm going to check my Oh, she's she's in her underwear. <laughs> Rating? Oh, we're, right? we're filming tonight, so she's coming over here. So maybe she'll jump into the end. Okay. Well, that's interesting, regardless. Oh, okay. I just saw my roommate's boob, so fuck. Okay. Um, we're going. We're talking about the nostalgia nature of the book, but because we are all we're all born in the eighties, yeah. 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 No. Yep. I've got a lot of it. How old are you? The way it made me feel old. <laughs> I was born in 91, so I miss it all. It's okay, I still love uh, the 80s. Don't worry. <laughs> old enough to be your babysitter. <laughs> big, big hair. Yeah. Oh, no. That's alright, I'll get over that. Um, once I do. Um... So the book opens up in like a kind of a almost near post-apocalyptic world. Um, and for me, when I was reading this, I'm like, oh, here we go. I just feel like everything in games and movies, as soon as it's sci-fi, it's post-apocalyptic. Um, and you've got Wade. So Wade is the young kid. And I think that, hold on, is everyone, can everyone mute the YouTube video? I think it's actually in the Google Someone's without headphones. Oh. That would be me, because I don't have any with me. Oh, um, the, so, the solution is um, if you mute your mic and then unmute, what do you want to speak? Yeah. Um, Thanks. Awesome. And sorry to Chris, yes, you are a dude. I, I did say all girls because there's all girls in the in the actual in the stream. But hi, buddy. And you've just gone because you have to help someone with a computer. Um, David Johnson, can you just write again um, how we can get you involved? You said you need to email a link or something. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to. I'll invite him again. For some reason, it's just not inviting people. So. It's, it's not just a girls club. This is for everyone. Yep. Alrighty. Um, so let's talk about like that kind of the opening setup. The how we introduce to Wade the characters. You automatically have to feel sorry for him because he is underprivileged. He has a terrible relationship. Um, and no, like he hasn't got a good kind of nurturing family or yeah, support his parents system. are dead. Yeah, well, yeah. Is it his sister that we That's hate? his aunt and her boyfriend. I told you, I read it in April. I felt, I felt <laughs> no remorse <laughs> at all with them. It's like, mm. oh, when they died, nothing. I know, right? No. Nope. Oh, spoilers, by the way. <laughs> it's a book. We, we did right. say you have to have read the book. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you're right. So you have this sense of you want him to win, you want him to do well. You're immediately on his side, and anyone else, like apart from the woman, the old lady that kind of you know he befriended, she's dead. Um, yeah. But, yeah. He, he didn't really care. So well, he well he did care, but it seemed like such an afterthought. I kind of thought that was a bit rough. Yeah, I know what you mean. The the only good thing that he had that was uh, you know living flesh. He kind of just dismissed in a way. Yeah, it was like one sentence, and that was yeah, it. yeah. I but will, I think I'll really the pace of the book kind of went that way. Like there were a lot of things that were just mentioned once and then never again. Mm. I found it first though. He loved mentioning. It was probably too often how much it costs to get around the the oasis. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. I get it. It's expensive. But it's so yeah. good. And I think the purpose of that was to provide this ostracizing nature. So you've got the, it's, it's like Robin Hood, you know, you've got the rich, really, really rich, and the more rich you are, the more rich you will become, and then the poor, and if you have no money, then you're basically a bottom feeder, which is why the, the Gunters were created in the first place. So once, yep. it was, once it was known that this guy, you know, was on his way out and his will was to give back to the thing that he created, and it was the ultimate geek, the ultimate prize was the fortune. Now, that in itself is, you know, yeah, I get it. You know, he put all this time and effort into it and what he loves, that's the person that's deserving of the money. But um, who would really dedicate their whole lives to it? A lot of people, it sounds like. Did you find that to be a realistic thing? 
if there's multi billions of dollars involved, I'm pretty sure that would happen. I mean, I would jump on board straight away. I wouldn't. I thought, I, what would I do? And I thought, yeah, maybe for a while, but then I think I'd just get bored and move on with life. I mean, they said it took, what, five years before the first clue was solved. Um, so I can sort of understand why it's like the really poor people like Wade who would stick with it because that's all they've yeah, got. Yeah, they've got nothing else to live for. Yeah, they've got nothing to lose. Well, so I, had a, nothing to lose. I had a really strong wow addiction for a while, so... Uh, I found that more relatable. So it's like, I've done less for quests. <laughs> like, <laughs> mm-hmm. to that. Hold on, can we see a show of hands? Those that have at least gotten to a level 40 in more than one character. Yeah, just a few. <laughs> Don't play it at all. <laughs> Power to you, that's way better. <laughs> yeah, yeah I've resisted as well. Oh, it's, and David is in love. Like, David! Oh, oh, David breaks up our game club. Hello, David. Good to have oh. your testosterone in the group. <laughs> I'm not sure how much you've caught on this, but it's um, we're just basically talking about the very, very start, how the relationship that the reader feels for Wade is very protective and you are backing him. He has nothing else. Like There's absolute desolation around him in his immediate life and in the life that he's born into. And um, we're talking about the birth of the gunter. Can we just also really understand the fact that a gunt is when your gut drops to your... I'm not going to say the word. I'm a lady. But that's what a gunt is. Does everyone know that? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I thought that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's... I think it's just an Australian thing or maybe it's just... Um, me being a povo or whatever, but so you know those those really really large people that looks like it's got your front bum, so it's like their gut has just sunk and it kind of just sits just like where they're. Are you sure you didn't just make this up, man? No, it's a, it's a gut. I always right. say it's a gut. So yeah, I've heard it gut I think I'm gonna Google this. It gets like yeah. a yeah. Don't Google images. Image oh, okay. Go to images. It's true. Urban Dictionary. There you go. Yeah. It's just like it's. <laughs> Yeah, Ooh, nothing is worse when it's like tucked into the pants and it's just this weird. But it's when they sit down on the. It's when they sit, it drops lower than their seat. Like it drops. Because it, it's their. But that's, it's like maybe that's realistic then. Most of the gunters probably did have that. How well, did? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, that's the thing. Wade beat himself up. He knew that he wasn't good looking. And I liked the fact that the protagonist wasn't a, a strapping babe. But, but I guess you don't it's really realistic. know that. He could have been. We never, we never get to see no, him. No, no, no. Remember how he, he realised he got a bit fat and he had to work yeah. out? Yeah, but you can picture him however like... you want. I never really thought he would be super, super, super fat. That was never how I saw him in my head anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, fat, fat suit. doesn't mean he's doesn't ugly. Mean ugly. True. True. No, no, no. He had, he had um, self-confidence issues. He's like, why yeah. is this girl talking to me? I'm so average. He kept beating himself down about the whole thing. Well, when you spend your whole life hiding behind a screen, of course that's how you're going to feel. Like, you can't really be a judge of yourself when you're, you know, hiding behind a screen and living in a different reality your whole life. I know, I know. Yeah. You level up enough and get enough experience points and you can look like whatever you want to look like. Well, that's right. It's not just weight. I mean, they said that what there were, like, two standard models that most of the female avatars used and they were either, like, supermodels or porn stars. Yeah. Okay, I guess that begs the question, guys. If... If you were to choose your ideal avatar, what would it look like? Like hey. me. <laughs> I'd, yeah? I'd make it like me, but like an elf. Always elves, every time. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Same. Yeah, but don't, don't we pick avatars all the time? I'm constantly designing my perfect avatar in Mass Effect. Yeah. And, you know, that's probably the only one I can think of that I actually spent time on, but, you know, we already do that. What? What did your shepherd look like? My oh, we showed each other our shepherd. Yeah, (laughs) she has an extreme duck face that I can't fix. (laughs) I'm gonna say the I know that one, and you don't actually see it until you log in and put her on the side a bit more. (gasps) Every time. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I would make mine look better. I would change everything. I'd be a little bit shorter, a little bit thinner. My, My boobs, like they'd be like. Like David, he, he would look really good right now. If you know oh, I love that shirt. Hey. <laughs> I love your shirt collection. Uh, 
so I've been trying to be building it up. Um, so I guess it's like no one needs to take care of their physical self when you can project um, uh, the, per per the perfected version of yourself. But Wade, to me, like he was Av. Mm. Yeah. Av, Av, you know, you wouldn't, yeah. I, I wouldn't, not the average person wouldn't double take when they walk past him kind of deal. Alright, so let's move forward in the book a little bit. We've established the fact that the Gunters group has um, rock and rolled, that they have dedicated five years studying absolutely everything, everything about this man that's created the Oasis. Um, it, it's like education has taken a seat, a secondary seat in a way, because it doesn't matter if you know your algebra or your arithmetic, it matters whether you know the back catalogue of every 80s cartoon, comic, computer game, beta system, you name it. So it's like, are these people getting dumber or are they becoming just elite in one area and everything else is on a back seat? Because I always wonder how our language is going to go should con um, t technology continue the path it's on. Well, he did um, say at one point that he learnt Spanish specifically because um, Halliday knew Spanish. So, And that could come into yeah. effect somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, would we get like a Firefly type universe where everyone speaks Chinese just because? You yeah, know, yeah, you totally would. You, oh, everyone a great would, example. would be just speaking 80s though, somehow. Yeah. Only in 80s references. They'd all swear in 80s references. Yeah, yeah. we'd all wear 80s fashion again. Yeah. God help Big us hair. all. <laughs> I'm okay with the 80s. <laughs> They did imply that the universe already had sort of picked up a lot of those features, though. Um, yeah. A lot of the, a lot of the, you know, the star systems that they built in the Oasis, it was like majority had been built after things that Halliday loved, and then even in real life, they they did say a bit about 80s fashion, didn't they? That it was coming back, or yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. It came back. Yeah. Everything from the 80s came back. Yeah, it's like they were literally living through that decade again, and they were stuck there until someone won the billion-dollar empire, multi-billion-dollar empire. Um, so I guess if we had to describe the plot from here, what would you say it would be? It's just it's for me like the major thing is just this sense of elitism, and it kind of pissed me off after I finished reading the book because I really enjoyed it, and then I went, ah, I've just enjoyed exactly what I hate about our geek culture, and that's elitism. <laughs> so I know about you. every reference that was made in it kind of made me curious on some of the more, especially coin-operated things back in the day the, before I was born. You know, I, mm. I grew up with Daytona and um, like time crisis, but not joystick stuff so much. But it, it makes me more curious about some of that stuff. But I think that was something for every geek in there. But I do think you have to have a geek, fair few geeky bones in your body to get the references of the book, yeah. otherwise you'd yeah. just be like, hmm, I can't relate to this at all. But did you notice like when they were in the hideout, like the first thing that would, they would say is just, hey, do you know about this? And they'd quiz each other, and if you didn't know the answer, then you were weak. And it's that like, I get, that on, I get that on a basis where it's like, um, has Shona dropped out? Oh. She said she didn't have audio. Oh. Yeah, sorry, I just unplugged my... Um, power so I could go and turn the light on in here because it's getting dark and then I knocked out my headset and it wasn't working. <laughs> anyway, <I'm good. laughs> technology, it loves us today. Um, I was just I was just saying, Shona, like, and you might have this as well, where this elitism that we have, I get challenged as well. It's like, oh, you call yourself a geek, then what's your favourite doctor? Who's your favourite doctor? Um, what's your favourite character in Star Wars and they kind of go, alright, because the geek culture is, expands over so many things. Yeah, yeah. And if you are a geek, then you have to master all of it. But guess what? I don't read comics. I love the comic book characters and heroes and I have the encyclopedias and I read about that, but I don't yet, yet read the comics. Um, you know, I love sci-fi, but I don't, I'm not a Trekkie, you know. Yeah, so like that. I don't and really like, get Oh, sorry, I don't really get challenged so much. Like, luckily, people don't come up to me and start asking me these random questions, but they will just make assumptions. So yeah, I get called a Trekkie when I haven't watched that much Star Trek overall. I like it, but I'm like madly into Stargate more than Star Trek. But people are like, "Oh, you're just a Trekkie, aren't you?" Like, no, yeah, there's so much more to it. 
Yeah, and I think that um, even Ernest in his book isn't even covering the whole geek spectrum. Yes, he's covered comic books, television series, music, you know, everything about that, but only within the 80s and this kind of specific time period. So even that in itself is, is not covering everything that there is. I don't think is. you can ever cover everything though, can you? I mean, there's always going to be that elitism and there's always going to be, you know, you're always going to like something more than something else. I didn't think, I guess he highlighted oh. that. And, yeah, but I think it's, he's just commenting on society then, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it feels like, it is... oh sorry, they, it feels like it's almost like this perpetual high school environment where, you know, you've got the people at the top, people and I'm like, you just naturally form that sort of dichotomy of who's the best and who's the worst. And the best is the one that studies the hardest, um, the one that knows everything, because knowledge is power, as we've all kind of discovered. So the more you know, the further you'll go. And I, I think those, the ones that do that, are the poor, because like we've said, you know, like we've, like we've said, they're the ones that have the most drive to get the money. But mm -hmm. I just didn't like the whole, and I know the reason behind it, but it's just. It's just reinforcing elitism in the geek culture, and I, I would love to kind of see it be abolished somehow. Yeah, Are like, you, like I'm thinking, one part of geek, awesome. Yeah, I'm thinking about that scene um, near the start of the book in H's basement where there's that guy I Rock. Yep, and yep. they're having like a geek battle, and Wade kicks his butt. Yeah. But then Wade gets like he's he's brought up and like you know he's inflated as his her heroic status because he knew everything, and I was like, but that's <laughs> shit because I don't I don't know everything. Yeah, so but at least of... for us, we're not you know trying to find this massive hidden fortune. We're just having fun with being geeks. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. But at that point in the book, they really didn't have any hope of ever finding it. Like, it was sort of this long-lost cause by this point. They're like, yeah, eh, maybe it, maybe we'll find it one of these days. But at that point, it was more just, you know, a little bit of, you know, showmanship. You know, I'm better than you, and maybe they'll get to that point later on. Yeah, because I know that at this stage, everyone kind of threw in the towel, except those that just loved a competition. <laughs> Um, what's, let's talk about the best friend and the love interest. Someone take it away. Ask I um, really couldn't stand Wade to start with, and I think mainly because the beginning of the book focused more on the culture than the character itself. And um, by the time he started really talking about his relationship with H and with um, Artemis, um, that's when I really actually started getting into the book and I really couldn't put it down. Um, the the culture itself, I mean, while I could relate to it, um, wasn't enough to keep me reading, but I'm glad that it developed later very much so. So you're saying the first half of the book was quite weak in terms of character development? Yeah. I, you're right, they kind of just threw into the race, the gauntlet, yeah. you know, as soon as that happened. Um, I've actually, I was reading around on other people's opinions and William... Klein, which is a bit weird, he said, for the first half of this book I was really unimpressed, the writing was flat, the story was unremarkable, the book gets hyped because of its pervasive use of the 1980s popular culture, particularly science fiction, fantasy and video games. The problem was that most of these references served absolutely no purpose. Huh. I actually it? felt the opposite, I felt the opposite in terms of the writing and the I guess the, the story in general, I started to not like it by the end of it because it just felt really, really cheesy. It got to mm. the point right when they're yeah. about to sort of win and you're like, come on, this you have no relationship or character development between him and um, the older guy, I can't remember what his name is, and yet he's just popped up at exactly the right second and he's going to fly away in his crazy expensive jet and make everything okay, but, but also oh, not... Oh yeah, he's got cheese bomb all. by the end. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that so the the writing style and the sort of the lack of character development at the end there and the lack of relationship development between him and that guy Ogden Ogden yeah that really annoyed me I think that it had it had really good sort of relationships types up in the middle but then by the end of it it was just it was gone See, I didn't really feel that way because I felt like Ogden had been like watching them, you know, from behind the scenes for a long time. So I thought that he would feel really fond of these kids, and that's why he was helping them. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I kept I expecting, expecting that he would come in. He just didn't want a dick to win. Yeah, understandable. Yeah. But it was I think really that's what he was manipulating the odds. It was so convenient, and also the fact that he hadn't helped them. Well, even at the end there, he wouldn't fight in that battle, even though he knew that, like, you know, they'd, they'd already been killing, the Sixers had been killing people, and, you know, destroying these people's families, but no, I'm not going to help you in this battle, I'm going to let you fight them yourselves, even though yeah. I have, in, you know, infinity life. That frustrated me a bit. See, Ogden sounds like Steve Wozniak to me, where he's, like, still doing interviews and still, like, kind of in pop culture, but he's not really doing anything with that other than just sort of spouting his opinions. And I think that's sort of, like, I can see the frustration with it, but at the same point it feels like he's meddling with things, but not really meddling. Yeah, that's true. And as well as in terms of relationships, at the end, when they sort of brought in the Halliday and Kira relationship... And I felt nothing towards that relationship whatsoever because they, you know, again, it was just sort of in there for convenience. Like, this is yep. why he did these things, except I'm not going to, you know, they didn't set it up at all. It was That, that was another frustrating thing at the end there. Yeah. Is it, is it kind of like the whole, um, you know, oh, there's a chick, I'm fascinated by her because she's, you know, again, elitist, she's all over the website, she forces her opinion on people, she stands up for herself, I have no idea what she looks like, but damn, I love her sass. And then I meet her, therefore I have to be in love with her no matter what. Yeah. It's like a relationship, yeah, for the sake of it being one. It didn't feel like it was, you know, you didn't feel like going, oh my god, these guys, like, whoa, fight for yeah. her. I think it, it just needed like... longer. They needed to bring that in earlier and not just throw it, tack it on the end there, basically. I think the whole, she had a birthmark on her face, wasn't it? Like a birthmark? Who gives yeah, that shit? This is, I was talking about Halliday and Kira, not... Um, Oh no! That oh, relationship, that relationship I'm on the was okay. wrong page. No, no, no. It was it, it, was, it was in the end when they explained why Halliday had done everything, and it was because of Kira, and that. that oh was, yeah, that was shit. There, there was no. That's setup. like that's like Snape, Snape and um bloody oh, yeah, Harry Lily, Mom. Lily Potter. Yeah, that was that's what that was. Copy yeah. and paste. Yeah. <laughs> I love her, but I can never have her. Or <laughs> get some new shit. Sorry. <laughs> <You're>, um... <laughs> okay, so now that I've opened up the, the bag of worms with the triangle relationship between Artemis, who I loved that twist, by the way. So that was a good twist with Artemis. Sorry, I really liked it. With Artemis? Yeah. H. 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 Artemis? Yeah. H. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, Artemis yeah. is, the, is the girl, and then David, H help me the out. You know your shit. Yeah, H was the one who everyone thought was a guy, but then, like, towards the end of the book, like, you have that whole thing where it's like, oh, you're totally not who I thought you were because yeah. he was he had a, he had a different avatar. He was, you know, H was a female, but playing a yes. male in the game H. because of that whole, well, you you don't want to go in with your, you know. Um, African American, you know, girl well, avatar, it, because yeah. that's not your power play. It wasn't yeah. just a female being a male; it was an African American female using a, a white, white male avatar. Yeah. I felt they tapped that, that on there, though. It almost felt like that was just a necessary part. Like you sort of had to include someone that did that. But there was there was a line towards the end that just felt really over the top. I wrote it down somewhere. Um, it was when when he finds out um, who she is, and he says. I understand her, trust her, and loved her as a dear friend. None of that changed or could be changed by anything as inconsequential as her gender, skin color, or sexual orientation. And I was just like, that's kind of over the top. It just yep. felt like they just tried to put, he tried to put every single little aspect in there so that you would... It was like Jerry Springer's final yeah. thoughts on his episode. Exactly. Yeah. We just saw a you know, paraplegic person beat the shit out of a midget. <laughs> I felt, a few to times, take away. <laughs> yeah, I felt a few times like the author was trying to sort of impress his own views on the readers. Um, there was that bit, there was like this bit near the start about, oh, how the whole world is a lie, you know, um, and there was a big thing about like atheism was another one. And then there was also this scene about like masturbation where he's like, yeah, it's okay to masturbate. And, and that like, was weird. Yeah, well, why was that <laughs> <you know? laughs> <laughs> well, he like, did he have like a game of checklist and he's like, right, you know, he has to feel like he's, he's not attractive, he's got to know everything in the geek culture, and he loves to masturbate. 
check, check, check. <laughs> and he bought the haptic doll as well. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> he but, but everyone wanted to know if that was a thing in the future, right? Like, I was morbidly curious about that. If you're going to make these suits. Of course it was going to be a thing in the future. Is there any other way? <laughs> like... What is it with the connect and stuff? They, you know, it's already they've made like some weird porn thing with it. I'm like, oh my gosh! Oh, really? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. I'll have to find the, the link. They made it. Coffee uh, me. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> the, the, look what I look up. Jeez, I'm gonna be quiet now. I mean, it, it was interesting the way that they used the camera to capture it all because it was just looked like a connect one. Like mm. at least with the second one, be somewhat involved, I guess. You can see the heart rate and everything. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> 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 that's like a real doll, real doll thing. Like, I think thing. this is a bit off topic, guys. Okay, let's get back onto the topic. <laughs> we were talking about um, forced relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those exist in this book. Well, I'm gonna, that's I think all we talking. covered. I think we covered all of them, though, didn't we? There wasn't that many. Yeah. What did you guys think about Holiday? I thought it was a bit crazy. Yeah, but I couldn't was... understand why people were worship, worshiping him so much. I think it's because he made the device that became their whole life. Like. I mean, realistically, I mean, if you write a science fiction book, it needs to make sense every single aspect of it. If everyone is in the oasis, how is there a fully functioning society still? Because you need to be alive. Yeah, it was there. Wait, there wasn't. It was falling apart. That was the point. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, say, let's fast forward a hundred years when. Um, there are no more farming, there is no more organic produce, there is no more food pretty much getting made at all. You need The, the um, Oasis only works if you're alive. So wouldn't they want to be preserving the earth if Oasis is their priority because you cannot but have one without life? I didn't think they were capable of preserving it though, were they? Wasn't it just falling apart by itself? Was yeah, we've already gone to shit with with like climate change and stuff, which I found like it, it was a lot of social commentary on what he thinks is he thinks is going to happen. So with like climate change and everything, that everything's going to go to shit, and we're going to use these things as an escapism. So like, oh. I get the escapism thing, but if if you could like literally transport part of your brain so you could still continue in you know, Oasis without your body, I'd be interested in that. I'd spend most of my time in Middle Earth. <laughs> <laughs> But it's interesting because I was thinking about the Oasis itself and like I really love the idea of using it for like gaming and stuff because who wouldn't want to be in like their favourite worlds like as if you were physically there. But when it came to like going to school and working, I would prefer to do all that stuff in person. So I don't think I would like the idea of living my whole life in this virtual world. I think yeah, if you're going if if you're gonna go into escapism, you escape to somewhere where you want to be. You don't escape to a place that you actually don't want to be at all. Like no one would ever play the game Virtual Jail. Oh, bar <laughs> soap. Oh, oh, don't be no. Like you just wouldn't want to do that. So I think you're exactly right with that. You wouldn't want to go, unless you do live in a trailer that's about to be bombed, um, and you, you know, or you don't like who you are as a person so much so that you would not want to leave a, a darkened room. Um, yeah. You'd want to try and get out there and, and do the mundane things as a person and then have that sense of escapism and fulfillment. Exactly. But, yeah, yeah, great point. While I agree with that, I also think that there's so many people in junior high, because junior high is a terrible time for everyone, that yeah. just hate life so much that they're like, I can go to this place where it's a different school and because I know all of this crazy stuff, like all this geek stuff, like i am become the powerful there. And so that actually almost would seem appealing, I imagine, to some fragment of, you know, the, the culture. Well, I got heavily picked on at school, so it sounded great. But I, if I could have muted some of those, like, mean people. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's I, was, I was that. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with that now. You can block I think people. Also, you can't um, block people in real life. Yeah. The access to all that information that was so much seemed to be so much easier than the world he was living in in the real world. 
and the fact that he struggled to even have access to it in the first place because he only had his school provided one, um, you know, it wasn't as much of an all the time thing until he started really, really getting into the gunting stuff. So, you know, um, he still had to have some reality, which is, you know, with his aunt and whatever. Yeah, which was pretty bleak. Yeah, yeah so what did they do? They blew the whole thing up. <laughs> Boom, problem solved. <laughs> like that, again, easy fix. It was kind of glazed over a little bit, that bit too. <laughs> Yeah. Kind of just took off and it was like, oh well. Well, um, what about when Wade, um, when Wade starts to win some of these, um, like the clues and he got, moves on and he gets fame, like massive fame throughout the entire universe in a way, the universe of the Oasis. He ha he's, he's on billboards, on forums, people worship him. He's, He's got money for the very first time. So mm -hmm. he's gone from having absolutely nothing to absolutely everything. How did you like the transition in his character when this took place? Hmm. So, guys, don't talk over each other, please. <laughs> I, I like how he kind of took it to excess because you hear all those stories of people winning the lottery and then, like, they spend it all and they become pretty much, like, dirt poor. Like, I like the fact that he went too far and had to sort of taper back from that point. Yeah, it was like being starving and seeing a, a banquet, you know. You don't go, oh, I'll have a strawberry, please. You just put your face in, you move your mouth, and you go. <laughs> Pretty much how I roll. <laughs> you know? But, but I do like that Wade, like, at various times during the whole book, like, there are parts you don't like, which, you know, it's... It makes him so that he's kind of a real character in some capacities because, like, he's got this hero worship of Artemis for a long time, which is the way that you know several many people on the internet, I'm sure, work that way. And I, I like that you want him to get better as a person as opposed to just you know him winning. Well, actually, when he started getting really distracted by Artemis and you know going out on all these dates with her, I'm like, no, get back to the hunt, get back to the hunt. I had exactly that same feeling. I was just like, you know, you spent your five years of your time, yes, worshiping her, but come on, multitask. Oh wait, you're a guy. Sorry. Oh awesome. yeah. <laughs> but he he got first love syndrome that happens to so many people. I've had a happen to of mine where it's just like they fall in love and then that's it. So nothing else exists, including a big crap ton of money. You're Can anyone hear what it they, the person that they first fell in love with? They would not say no to hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars just to see if it would work. I mean, yay, true love and all that horse shit, but when push comes to shove, we're all greedy motherfuckers and we're going to take that kind of cash. And then, with that much money, whoever we want will find us attractive because that's the ridiculous society that we live in and I'm really bitter for some reason. Fuck everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Excuse my How language. Really I should have put a, I it's okay. put a warning. <laughs> now it says explicit on YouTube, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. group and then I'm bringing in. Let's he's only hug. like... 18 years old, too. Another <laughs> stroke of No one wants to hug you, Maud. Stop it. I did. <laughs> I, I moved in, but it was a lot longer. It was more... Yeah. Was, I'm very close to my laptop. Yeah, I think I'm just be putting my chest into the camera. Friend. It wouldn't be a good one. Um, okay, so yeah, the, the battle of greed versus love, I guess it is. Um, I kind of liked how, and, and again, it doesn't really make sense, but how H was such a good sport being like second all the time. Oh no, man, you have all the glory. No, it's cool. It's cool. Let's work together. Oh no, that's fine. I'm just I'm yeah. going to be here. I didn't really get that though. I didn't. That didn't come across to me. I think. Um... Because because they weren't helping each other except occasionally, and for a while there he was even ahead of Wade. So. Yeah, well that's because that's because Wade fell into the love hole. But um, I know that H didn't like being third wheel because he kind of felt accepted for the very first time, and then when he was getting pushed out of the inner circle, he yeah. But they, he didn't even really care because they talked. They stopped talking for months when um, mm. Wade and Artemis got together. So I I don't know. I felt like he was sort of indifferent really. Towards that, but he was you, just doing his own I mean, thing. There and was he had a his own life too. Yeah. Sorry, he had his own life where he was like 
you know, some top competitor as well in like some online arena or whatever. They didn't really go into too much detail about it, but it seemed like, you know, he was first in a lot of other areas of his life anyway. Yeah, if anything, I thought that he w he probably was a bit superior to Wade. Mm, me too. Well, he that was the charismatic one. He was the one where, you know, you'd think that everyone would try and impress. He's the kind of guy that would get the girl, but didn't want the girl. Well, did want the girl. Well, did well, want the girl. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get the girl. He had a girlfriend though, right? Well, but I, I, I yeah, thought the stakes were getting a lot higher competitive-wise. I felt that, I mean, the brother team that weren't really brothers, they kind of had it right where they had formed this ultimate alliance and then just shut everyone else out. And it was, you know, and I would be like that, no offence, I think some of you are great people, but if there was that kind of money on the line and I had an answer and you're like, tell me, I'd go watch me walk away from this conversation and then hire someone to kill you. Um, again, I just want to really, really hone in the fact that you're all amazing people. And I didn't just threaten your lives. I haven't threatened your lives yet. Um, so I thought, yeah, I just thought that the competitive nature would be ramped up a whole lot more. I thought it would be brutal. I thought it would be vindictive. I thought they'd try and kill each other. I thought that, you know, with stakes that high, like people have killed each other over less. Mm. I think the whole sixes thing kind of yeah. fixed that up, though. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, that they were, in the end especially, all joined together, forced together against the sixes to not destroy the world that they knew. And I also, I don't, think they, I don't think they ever thought that they were actually going to get to the third gate. Like, I thought, I think that they thought it was so far off after those first five years that they, they weren't going to fight each other over it because it was, you know, so unattainable. Hmm. And I'm never teaming up with you ever. Um, obviously, with every hero, there needs to be the ultimate villain. Do you guys think that the Sixes were a good, a good group like that? I, I think the leader was. What's his name? Sorrento. 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 He was a douchebag. I would have killed him. I, I like had trouble, guy. like building up like ultimate hatred for him. Though I found they were kind of like very stereotypical villains. Yeah, I wish there was like an, an argument that the Sixers had instead of like, ah, oh, we want it because we want money. I wish it was almost a, look, this is the reason why we're doing it and you could see, because usually everyone has power for the greater good and one person's version of good is not necessarily the other person's. But I wish that what they were saying was almost like, wow, I, I understand why you would do that instead of just like, evil, evil, blah, 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 bad, bad. You know? They were a little yeah. bit, though, they, they were in it to have control of the Oasis rather than the money. They obviously had money already. They wanted, well, they wanted to make money the from the Oasis. They, yeah, they, they wanted said to that, but I mean, they obviously had a lot of money to begin with because they were spending so much on all of their weaponry and stuff. So really, they weren't going to gain much money out of it, even if they put advertising in the Oasis. I think they wanted to create a different kind of Oasis. Whether or not that was a better kind, you, you don't really know. They don't really specify I think it was saying it wasn't that Wade wouldn't be able to afford to log on because he had nothing. They were going to do a monthly fee. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. That didn't that's seem because, realistic because to me. The hero, because the hero is Wade and he had absolutely nothing, and this, he, he's kind of like the spokesperson for all the impoverished people. Um, this was their only source of everything. This was their world, and because you have that, you know, intake going in, that in turn is evil. Going well, no, because we're our our whole feeling of this everything. It's through the eyes of Wade. So if he suffers from that, then that is, that's a problem for me. Whereas you needed to kind of remove, remove how it would affect Wade in a way. Uh, speak words, more. Does that make sense? Yeah, I see where you're coming the villain, from. The villain was doing everything that w um, would destroy Wade. And because Wade is, is the protagonist, you are so empathetic towards him and what would affect him. But I, I, I just hoped that, I wish that the Sixers was like a, not, oh, you know, wait, this, this is going to make your life hell, but it's going to be like a, everyone wins. Like if it was just advertising, no monthly fee, you know, that's not as bad. No one misses out. It's still inclusive. It's not the pure everything of evil. Good chat, guys. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I mean, I think the way, sorry, it was a very like idealistic view of the Oasis that you know the author was trying to portray. Um, you know, free speech and it's a free for all, and I guess that's sort of how he wants the internet to be. The net neutrality stuff. Yeah. 
Crystal, you were saying something? I can't remember what I was saying anymore. <laughs> I can it's really hot here, and my laptop is burning my lap. It is really warm <laughs> like, today. And oh, that's why I'm just shiny face. So, yeah. It was warm in LA today too. David, where about to you? Uh, the the bad guys in this book almost seemed like the the bad guys from Avatar, like the 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 the, the evil corporation, like killing all the the blue people. Yeah. Like it seemed like just capitalism at all costs, sort of thing. Like that's yeah. what we're doing because it it helps us the most, and like it it kind of just you know you have a corporation in any you know video game or whatever, and they they have to be evil because they're a corporation, and it, it kind of was a little silly, but at the same point, like. I think their their best cards were done like, oh, we've got this horrible thing that we have to go conquer. Okay, it's a video game at this point. We can at least you know what you know at least it looks a little bit better that way. I think like their best card was really like when Wade thought he was going to this negotiation with the Sixers, you know, in the position of power, and then like they top so you know completely flipped it up. So like that, I think that was really cool, even though it was like kind of like whoa, that's you know serious stuff like. I thought that was pretty cool of them, but, you know, it, they, the Sixers kind of did become, like, the faceless evil, just like, you know, all the Stormtroopers did in, you know, Star Wars. Yeah, 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 exactly. I think if we really broke the book down, we could get so many parallels where it's just, it's a collage of copying and pasting all the things that worked um, and that are subtly stereotypical within every other movie and book out there. Did What was, what was something that was so unique and different that made you sit up in awe? What were the standout points for you guys? I think I got the same feeling of it that, you know, everything I, as I was reading through it, I was going, ooh, that's like that, ooh, that's like that. Um, I don't think I really had any standalone, maybe the Oasis itself. Hmm. Which, again, isn't something that's so unheard of. I mean, we've all yeah. thought of or heard of this, this living... Stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's Basically, it. Yeah. yeah. Except this one had Firefly, and that made me really happy. Yeah, I know that, 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 like, that one quote. I hooped out. I was like, <laughs> it was it was the Firefly world, and then later when he's when he's flying the Firefly class ship, both of those. I was like, yes, that would be the ship that I would have if I was going to be in this universe. So like, that would it, it, it would sign me up. Sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> Is that is that is that what it was? The satis the satisfaction as the reader was finding our own Easter eggs within what he was doing. So, really, and I need aliens meme or I need Keanu Reeves meme right now. So really, the words of the book were our oasis that we were reading into, and the Easter eggs were what we were gaining from it as geeks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? I am That's not the wrong point. I think you went too deep, Maud. That was like three levels too deep. Okay, come on. If you're watching so this with up. memes, can you please make the, the Ready Player One meme with the Keanu face? <laughs> In the words of the great theologian Keanu Reeves, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> but I think that's what it was. It, the, reader, the reader satisfaction was... was Getting the shit that he was talking about, it was because I remember the Firefly quote, and I just nearly had a, a fit. You know, and it's that's what we were looking for. We were reading each page, to be like, what else is he going to talk we about? Were... What else am I going to recognize? Possibly, yeah. I think people could have still read this book and not known any of the references and still loved it, though. I mean, Firefly. I don't know if. I don't. I don't know if, if you know people are going. I don't know anything about the geek culture, but come on, Artemis and Wade, you guys can do maybe, it. Maybe, maybe not necessarily anything about the geek culture, but there was probably a lot of fandoms that he didn't mention. And there was you know, it's the Doctor Who fan, like the Doctor Who fans are like, "Where's my TARDIS? Why don't? Why doesn't yeah. want a TARDIS?" I thought was there a mention? No, maybe not. I, I, I mainly just watch my stuff with the Star Wars. There's the Star Wars Star Trek world and the Firefly world. All were like near each other. I'm like, oh my god, I'd just be going to each one. It would be yeah, and the Blade Runner world is really cool too. Mm, yeah, that was fun. And he mentioned <laughs> Stargates like as a form of transportation without talking about like the Stargate world. I was disappointed by that one. Yeah. yeah. I, it made me think more of Mass Effect actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Having yeah. the gate. 
Though, um, talking about Easter eggs, um, there was the real life Easter egg. Do we want to talk about that? Yeah. Did anyone, did anyone hear about that? Uh, he, he, briefly, put, he put yeah. an Easter egg in his. He put an Easter egg in, in all copies of, of the. Yeah, yeah, and, and got a and gave someone a DeLorean, which is pretty cool. That's a book Hold within on. a book. Within a book. <laughs> what was what? Happened? Do you know what the Easter egg actually was? I heard about it, but I didn't know what it actually was. It was um, it was three video games. So the first one, there was a URL printed somehow in the books, and I don't know how they did it, but it was in every physical copy of the book. And then that URL took you to a game, and I think it was like something on Atari. And then, Maud, you're not gonna be able to find it. It took people months to find it. <laughs> but yeah, it took people to, to a copy of the Atari game, and then there was two other games after that. Um, and then the person that won all three got a DeLorean, which is pretty cool. Oh, come on, that's awesome. God damn it! The last one DeLorean. was actually really cool, because you had to go to an actual arcade and beat a high score, like national high score, in order to win that. And so oh. that was like the real crazy part of it. And someone did so it. So this one was just catering. They're yeah. just catering for like... The real life people. So anyone that read this going, yeah, this is my jam. I wanted jam. to that, yeah. yeah. Wow. But people found it without getting any indication that there was something there. Is that what no, I mean? No, 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 no. They took, um, it took a trailer that he put on YouTube to pe for people to start searching. So no one found it in the 10 months before they put out that trailer. And then once they did put that on YouTube, then people started searching for it and eventually they found it. Right, mm. right. I'm just going to take this time to... To shout out to um, Geek Bombshell Saber, who's watching it with Mary. No, I've got about oh, hey. 100 text messages from them. Yeah, yeah, I got a Snapchat, oh. but I didn't, I, I didn't listen to it. I, I, I got a Snapchat, but I haven't checked it. Yeah, me either. <laughs> FOMO, guys. You got FOMO. Um, Joe Ramirez is going, dude. What are you guys talking about? Well, <laughs> and also that subtle question. We should talk about Craig's question. Yes, that was a great question. Uh, I guess, Joe, if you're still around, um, there's a book called Ready Player One, and we're just talking about it. Um, Craig, uh, he has come on board and asked a pretty cool question, if, if, if I do say so myself. He said, if you were casting a film version, who would you cast as these characters? I the think the first question should be, be is it possible, though? Is it, has it been cast? Are they making that? Yeah, they're well, making it. Right. I would be to ask movie? you guys what you think about that. Who did yeah, they cast they? for it? Uh, I don't cast? know if they've oh my God, I want to... written the first script. I was reading something online oh, earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was wondering how you would possibly do that. How do you how do you make that into a movie? I think from uh, what I've heard, Ernest Klein is a screenwriter of some sort because yeah. I think the day after he sold the publishing rights to the book, he also sold the film rights. Yeah. All right. Ready Player One is in development. That's all. And has been since 2010. It's with Warner Brothers. Now, Warner Brothers. Who did? Who did? I can see it kind of being like an Ender's Game kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, how do they? Have you seen Ender's Game? How are they possibly doing that as well? Like, I haven't seen. I think it's game. just come That's out, hasn't Facebook it? Club. It's Club. <laughs> yeah, this past weekend. Yeah. Jesus, because I was like, how do you how do you film this? It's all a, a video game or people flying in the air. It doesn't make any sense. I know, I know. Oh, hold on. I'm just going to... I've got it in my pocket here. I'm just going to drop a name. I just interviewed Harrison Ford about Ender's Game. I watched uh, that interview. It's pretty funny. He's well, a cranky bastard, isn't he? You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought my question was fine. What brought you back to the sci-fi genre? And he got really <laughs> shitty at me. But I could have said anything and he would have yelled at me. Um... <laughs> But that, yeah, that's that's for another, another time. I think it will be like that. Um, I think that they'll cast a good-looking guy to play Wade because it's going to be a Hollywood movie. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I picture um, Artemis to kind of look like... I mean, not Artemis. Artemis is kind of like Willow out of bloody Buffy a little bit for me. Really? I think she's yeah. too soft. I, I always imagine... Cause her, her avatar is supposedly curvy and curvaceous and, and good looking. Yeah, and then apart from the birthmark, so I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I saw Willow. I, I, just, Willow picture saw I just picture characters in my head, and I never really think of them as like relating to actors or just people. They're like yeah, I know. Exactly. Same. If I could draw, which I can't, I'm gonna try and draw you what um, 
Halliday looks like? Just give me a second. I'll, I, I think he looks... Oh, there's a, I picture someone like Dave um, Callahan in my head for Halliday. Like, long hair, beard, a bit weird looking. <laughs> oh, I can't draw. <laughs> I'm going to take this uh, this one moment to shout out to Kieran because he's watching. That's his beard. What? And what? Was that a, like a... It, it looks like it was from Futurama. <laughs> I was thinking Futurama, but yeah, that works too. That's awesome. That is. That's just stuff that God himself... I always, I always pictured him with Jesus hair, though. He should have long hair. Yeah, he did. That eye. That was what yeah, I imagined. Yeah. Sorry. That was supposed to be long. Yeah, long, and then he had like a kind of a cropped, neat facial hair with glasses. Oh, really? No, Brown. I pictured him like a wizard, so he has a long wizard beard. Yeah, long beard. Exactly. No, it was cropped in my head. <laughs> I like like a fat wizard. It's just fat, a fat wizard, and then like Ogden was a skinny wizard. Uh, Ogden was like an owl in my head. If a man was an owl. <laughs> so like when the movie version comes out, we'll all have another hangout and discuss like that person didn't look like how I pictured them. Yeah, I would rather have the who would be cast in the movie um, conversation with uh, Name of the Wind. Oh, I haven't read yeah. that yet. So we'll see. Me either. Get, get to it, guys. Shona and I are frothing at the mouth over that book. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be our next book as well. We might as well announce it now. I had it all queued up here. <laughs> yeah. Name of the Wind by Patrick that's Rothfuss. Good. Awesome book. Oh, so. Great book. And we're also going to do Ender's Game somewhere in there too. Yeah. yeah. When, is it, when does that movie come out? It's, it's ages, right? It's at. It's just it's out. Out. I think in the States. No, no, no. Yeah, it just came out this weekend. I thought, it, I thought it got pushed back to December. David, where do, whereabouts do you live? Uh, Washington. Washington, D.C.? How are you going you on know, that? No, the state Washington. What? As in like, Washington Seattle, state. Washington. West Coast. Yeah. <laughs> so, buddy, I live in your country and I don't know shit about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have been to a lot of places, though. I He's just haven't like been there yet. To you, man. Oh, really? You guys are in the same. same you're on the same zone. coast, right? Yeah. Oh, so it's one o'clock in the morning for you? Yeah. I see. We're gonna fall back to really twelve o'clock, so it's all good. Oh, it is too. Yeah, so yeah, it just switched. Right. Yeah. Oh man, David, you just going to be your favorite person. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <You're awesome>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so back to the book. Um, Ready Player One, Easter eggs, the real life one. I didn't know that. Um, and it's Klein. This is his first book, isn't it? No. Go on board. Do you know one? anything? I think he wrote something. Was it called like The Wire or something? And he also wrote Fanboys, the movie Fanboys. Oh, the movie Fanboys. I didn't really? know that. So this is kind of like. There you go. Oh, David, I just I saw love David's love movie. Love I just saw David's mind go. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was his first book. I think he wrote it, it was. Maybe it was his first novel. Um, yeah, it was a pretty good effort. I'm not gonna lie. I, I wrote. I thought it was. Wouldn't be that good. How did you How did you like the sentence structure, the paragraph formations? Did you find it? I found it to be an easy read. I wasn't stuck on anything. Um, I think it flowed well. I don't think it was there were jarring moments where I was like, wait a second. Like, meh. I, don't yeah, think I think it was, it was well written. I don't think it was like very sophisticated though. I mean it was no Game of Thrones. It was it was easy yeah. to read. Like it was one of those things that I would knock out you know, in a day. Which is which is good, but again, I don't know, I sort of I sort of depends on my mood as to what I want to read, but yeah. I actually paid attention to the sentences and I realised that they are quite short. Um, yeah. yeah. In honest, in all honesty, I thought it was a teenager's book until it started to get into the weird masturbation, weird robot, sexy thing, <laughs> and I was just like, okay, maybe not so much, maybe a little bit older, um, because it was just, yeah, it was an easy read for me, so uh, that's yeah. what I assumed until, yeah. I'm just wondering, actually, if he wrote it with the intention of turning it into a movie, because, I mean, he's written movies before, the movie rights were sold at pretty much the same time, so do you think it's kind of written in the format that it can be easily adapted? It's funny, though, because I, I couldn't picture it at all as a movie. I couldn't I couldn't see how they would do it unless it was all CGI. And in 3D. So that when you put your glasses on, you, in turn, were walk getting into... <gasps> That's, That's going to be a pretty fucking clever! Oasis visor. 
No, no, no. Like it's going to be like the the things that aren't in Oasis are going to be two D. So you take the glasses off, and then when they go into the Oasis, yeah. you put your glasses on, becomes three D, and it says, ah. I see people Ernest, getting confused. Ernest, are you watching this? I've just made you more money. <laughs> well, as long as they sell, they sell, sell thirty dollar limited edition visors, though, obviously. The, uh, we, would we see merchandise come from this? Do you think? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. You'll probably see a video game rip off as, rip -off as well. Like someone, someone will bring that out. Yeah. Well, the, the the only problem with that is that there's so many references to things that are copyrighted that that would be just a legal nightmare to do. That's true. Mm. I was just thinking about that. The credits would go forever. Yeah. <laughs> that is right. Um. And I, oh, and I had the whole. I never watched the cartoons because it was quite earlier. The um. Where you unlocked the robot to get your big super big robot dingo that you got to select once you finished the game. Help me with the thingos. Oh yeah, that one the, the, second, at the second, second gate. gate. That and was just like freaking Voltron. I kept sitting there going, Evangelion, Evangelion, Evangelion. Yeah, and then they chose Gundam instead. <laughs> Eventually they got there, but yeah. <laughs> I, but I mean, uh, in terms of turning into a movie, it would just I can just only see it being like. And remember how, remember how Power Rangers. I was um, just. Yeah. Yeah. That, very I that really TV like you know, and you could just see pretend that there was just there's some. But I would guy. I would watch that. I think that would be cool. Oh. <laughs> you know, and they had to black the guy out because it's just a toy that they've decided to make really really big. It's just gonna be like cut, cut out to the town. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it's, and it's nostalgia for me because I didn't get the '80s nostalgia. I'll get the Power Rangers nostalgia. That's great. Put that in it. Power Rangers. Oh, look, 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 look. Timeless. Power Rangers are timeless. They're still going. That's yeah. yeah. I yeah. My it's boy. It's pretty hilarious. It's part of my boyfriend's daily ritual to watch Power Rangers, <laughs> Power Rangers, and then Friends. I'm like, I'm glad you've had. A <laughs> Power Rangers is What happens when you work in social media? I was at Kamikaze over the weekend, and there was a blue Power Ranger from the Samurai Power Rangers. He was there doing signing. <laughs> <laughs> no one else was there, though. And you know, Adamus was there. He said for sixty bucks for an autograph from Adamus. That's, that's uh, crazy. worth it, possibly. Yeah. Crazy. Wish I, I wish I knew Chris. I walked yet. out. I yeah. Anyway, that's my story. Um, we haven't really gone into the, um, much detail about um, Artemis. Ladies, and David, I'd love to hear your opinion on this too, did we like the fact that there was a kick-ass girl in there? Do you, do you think she served... What purpose do you think that she I served? Didn't, I didn't really see her as being that kick-ass, though. Mm. She was the love interest in my head rather yeah. than having her own sort of arc. That's the thing. So she started off being, you know, like the dominator on the forum. She was this, like, you know, girl full of attitude. She's like, I'm here to win. I'm awesome. I know everything. I'm the best. And she was intimidating like that. But then, boom, love interest. Yeah. But I think she was, she was introduced as the love interest. I don't... You could tell even from the way that he first spoke about her that he was into her. So yeah, she, I never really got that kick -assness. The scene where he runs into her in the Tomb of Horrors, like, it, um the first gate, um, or sorry, when he's trying to get the copper key, and I'm like, yep. yeah, she's kick-ass, like, she comes in, she's like, who are you? And then, yeah. but, and then, you know, she's really intimidating, she found it first, She's except she's been trying to clear it, um, but then, yeah, after that, yeah, her character development, just love interest. And, and then I thought, yes, it would be kind of cool if she was there to win, and she was, if she had maybe a boyfriend, that could have been better. So she wasn't automatically, oh, you're single, you have to be the love interest. And the only reason why she didn't want it to work was because she was ashamed of how she looked. I, I kind of thought that that made her more weak than she was. I got a bit sick of that. Like, they went on about that a little bit too much. Oh, I'm ugly. I don't look like this in real life. You don't know the true me, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, shut up now. Yeah, because she was projecting so much kind of like, power yes. and ferocity, you know? So if she's going to project all this, I'm here to win, I'm amazing, I know my shit, that confidence should translate back to who she is as a person, but it's like as soon as we get to know her, we realise how insecure and how, not pathetic, but just 
less of what she has been put in our heads to be. Yeah, I didn't like that. I didn't like that because it came down to looks in the yeah, end. It's like bullshit. Bad. Hello. Yeah, I was, I've had I was saddened friend. by it. I've had a lot of friends before that, that, I've never, that I've met before that I've never seen. Um, and, you know, there's always that thing in the back of your head that's like, what do they look like? And, and it doesn't really matter all that much, but it's I think still... as a reader we're trying to form, um, formulate it in our heads. Like we want a description. Yeah. We want to be able to just imagine them because that's how you read better when you can see them in your mind. Yeah, yeah. So that's as far as like the, the necessary um, di looks description goes because we need it to be able to read and, and to enjoy the book. But I think uh, my, my problem was when it came down to her looks, changing her personality so dramatically, it's like the whole book is based on knowledge is power and she had a lot of it. So she was, a f you know, she's formidable. She was, she was the one that was keeping him on his toes. So by the end... In a way, it's not in reality. So I think that's where I took it as she was two different people because one of one side of her was online and the other yeah. side of her was in this weird dystopian world. And you've got H who is one person in the game and one person different yeah. outside of it. Do you think that maybe Wade stuck true to who he was both in the game and outside of the game? Mostly. Yeah. Yeah, he was probably the only one, really. Mm. Well, with H, apart from the whole, okay, black chick instead of white male, I thought the personality was the same. Mm -hmm. He was probably yeah. she or, you know, depending if you're talking about her or the avatar, was probably the most true to themselves. Mm. But they only felt truly yeah. comfortable yeah. in yeah. other skin. Yeah. What was that, Crystal? Oh, it's just except for, like, the rest. Of her, you know, the, her looks, her actual, like the fact that she's, you know, gay and black and actually a girl. But I'm like, it kind of, I liked how they threw it because you kept expecting someone to be, yeah, like the wrong sex compared to their avatar. But you kept expecting it to be, um, like the stereotypical male that was, you know, trying to be a female. So I kind of liked the fact that they they did switch it around at least. So it was like, oh, that that's cool. Mm. But um, and yeah, it wasn't she, so much of a shock. It was like, ah, oh, right, I get it. But I was I was sense. expecting it from the start. I mean, I picked I picked up on every little hint he dropped about her or him not being who he said he was. So I think it just felt a little bit like he put it in there purely because he had to put it in there. I think yeah, because in a realistic sense. That would happen. It would happen. There's, it would a, happen all there's the a show called Catfish for a reason. Yeah, that was that was in my notes. It's very yeah. catfish. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What else have you got in your notes there? I don't know. I think we covered everything actually. Um Yeah, the ending. I don't know. The ending in general sort of annoyed me, but I said I yeah. said a bit of that earlier. Okay. It was yeah. too cheesy, too over the top. And it was too easy as well. I felt like they didn't really struggle that hard at the end there to figure it to, like, you know, to it's get that It's almost like money. he was, he had, had a deadline. For me, it was like he had a deadline of this particular yeah. day. It's like, we need it finished. We need to get it out there. We need to do it now. I was like, ba ba ba. I, I felt done. like he was like, this is getting too long. I need to tie it up. Like, it's, mm. and, and he did. He tied it up. It was, it was not very, not a significant part of the book, the ending. It was just quite no. small compared to the rest of it. So you spent, yeah, I get that you spend a lot of time setting something up, but I think when it's so complicated of that battle and that ending, it should have had more time. Um, is this to also... Like, I kept expecting it for, like, especially with the, like, the thing about the red button, I was like, oh, what what's going to yeah, happen with this red button? And then it was like, bam, end. I'm like, oh, but the button, what are the... They gonna do. I was I was thinking this is there's gonna be a sequel. Like I was expecting a sequel from that, and that's why it was set up that way. But I guess we won't know. Yeah, have but you heard? Is there gonna be a sequel? Well, if he's making a movie, it'll I guess it'll fall after that. Oh yeah, if Warner Brothers is bought into that, they're not gonna buy one movie. They'll buy three. Yeah. And the third movie might be broken into two. <laughs> <laughs> Franchises are all the rage these days. Oh. With everything. So, if there is a sequel, where do you guys think it will go? 
Oh, so I really, really am, it, has to, it has to involve the button, right? I mean, it, it's gotten to the point where they have to get rid of this this alternate world because it's it's destroying everyone. Everyone's spending all of their time in it. They're not spending their time on their real lives. It's it's destroying humanity, basically. So I imagine it, it turning really dark for starters, and then you know going into oh wait, and it's not gonna do? work. And the next two movies are shit. It's just like the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Hunger Games six as well. Like Mr. Edison. And, and don't Hunger forget Hunger Sorrento. Because <laughs> Sorrento's going to get off scot free, so that's also another arc in there. So he's. Oh, and he'll be the bad guy. Could yeah. Sorrento be hacking the system somehow and wires the money into his account? Possibly. Oh. And then the only option is to press the button and cancel it before it gets ruined. Or we could write the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, if Ernest Klein is watching us right now, there's all your ideas. <laughs> I've tweeted it. Hi, Ernest. I'm more of the girl that keeps harassing you. On we Twitter. did tweet it to him, yeah. He mentions, is, he mentions your uncle in the book. I think you get, you get a photo. I did! Oh, that's right. Yeah, I laughed at that. Therefore, that's my age you should reference. be watching. Ernest Klein, mad respect to Midnight Oil. It was the big 80s then. That's pretty wicked. Oh yeah, I lost it. I was so yeah. Page, yeah, I love that because I'm playing at home. Um, <laughs> and also, I heard uh, that um, Will Wheaton did the audiobook version, and he hadn't yeah. read it, so he's reading it like for the recording, and then he comes across <laughs> himself in the book. <laughs> oh, I love that. Brilliant! That's crazy. I loved yeah. how they referred to the to him and whoever else it was. I can't remember. Um, as geezers. And, and also that they were they were like the presidents or something. Were they running the world? Will Wheaton and someone else? I was yeah, really happy yeah. about that. Yeah, that's right. Will Wheaton was president. That's hilarious. <laughs> so he would be my president in an ideal world. So uh, guys, if um, you could only visit one planet out of all of them there, I know we've discussed that we loved the Firefly one. Like, but was it? Yeah. There's no one. <laughs> okay. Firefly. Oh. And Captain Malcolm Reynolds greets you there. Oh, he better. It better be all of them. There's something that um, most nerds are expected to like, Firefly. That's something that I've never watched. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what, what, what would be your ideal planet then, or your ideal world? Oh, Middle Earth, straight up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that so was you would mentioned. sacrifice all technology and all social media and For all hobbitsy. light, light and electricity, and uh, you know. Mind you, Toilet. four potatoes. Still got those, and that's pretty good. Yeah, three breakfasts, right? <laughs> <laughs> I live by that rule. Right? <laughs> um, where would I want to be transported to? Well, I'm reading it thinking there'd better be this a Hyrule planet. Oh, there you go. I would totally go to Hyrule. Hold on. For everyone playing at home, where's my other poster? That's a Zelda poster. Yeah, oh, wait, I've been I, admiring I could, that during this chat. That. I could always just do that, and then that's like argument one. So pretty. Um, yeah, no, I go to Hyrule for sure. I was actually thinking that um, just seeing our solar system would be awesome. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Um, from a different perspective. Um, especially if we could fly around in ships or whatever, it would be so awesome to be able to fly in amongst all the planets and stuff. And can you imagine yeah. just getting into your ship? Like this is the thing. This is this is where escapism comes in. Like as a reader, yeah. we want to read all about this and just let our minds and imaginations just go. Oh, I can have whatever I wanted, and it's all in one book. It's like the <laughs> all sorts of chocolates kind of deal. You open the box and say, oh. Except there's always a couple that you don't like. That's it, yeah, yeah. Turkish like fucking delight. The mint ones for me. What? The I, mint I'm ones. Who loves Turkish delight? I love it when I people love, don't like it because I'm like, gimme. Yeah, gimme, I gimme, love gimme. Turkish delight. I'm all over it. <laughs> Licorice. Mint. I'm with oh, you, Shana. Mint, mint, mint can die. Oh my yeah. god. Yay. My people. <laughs> <laughs> the anti mint book club. <laughs> <laughs> so tune next week when we give when we give the shits to peppermint. Um <laughs> oh, okay. Um, you, going back to your notes, Tara. Um, yes. The game, the world. Where did we like the boss 
battles because when you play a game, there's obviously always boss battles. And we like the fact that they use that kind of gaming structure within the. But I found that like all of the boss battles were different '80s video games, right? So like he yeah. he fought different '80s video games, which which isn't bad, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more. Sort One of, of them was the talk, like saying, th- oh, maybe it wasn't a boss battle. Though, oh, the movies, talk- yeah, yeah, but that, yes. that was the second part. He did that twice right. as well, but yeah, I don't know. I, I would have liked to have seen some other challenges. I feel like Halliday would have set, like he could have set a lot of different sorts of challenges rather than just, you know, 80s yeah. point operated yeah. video games. Yeah. I, think so. yeah. I, like, I don't really get those. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as someone who didn't play 80s coin operated video games, because I wasn't born then, um, I felt like Possibly there could have been other stuff. Maybe I, I liked when he played um, the Rush song on guitar. Like that was that was a really cool yeah. thing. That was like, yeah. that's a dip, but it wasn't a cha- it wasn't one of the, the boss battles. It was just. A, but it was refreshing like, for us. Yeah, exactly. To not see the the formula exactly. there. So yeah. I feel like there could have been so many other things he could have explored within that universe that could have been. Him in the I don't know. I didn't live in the eighties. But I would have liked to have seen more. I don't know. Um, I love eighties music. I would have loved to have seen more eighties music. Basically, um, you could have had Guitar Hero with that. Yeah, he could have played. A, I guess. Yeah, but I, I like the idea that he was playing real guitar and that he learned it purely because he oh. loved Rush, and that was sick. Um, but they could have. I don't know. There could be more. More about movies, maybe. More about music. Just because the the, the actual boss battles were games. I did like the movie challenges where you got to like step into yeah. one of the characters the and live out the movie. That would have been a lot of fun. That that is a good idea for a video game. If yeah. someone doesn't make that no. with the Oculus Rift, I don't know. Yeah. Why do I exist? But I mean, how would they do that in the movie? Because they'd have to get the original actors in the original. Sorry, Chris, I keep talking over you. What were you saying? Yeah, I don't know how they would do that. Maybe they would put you in as that character. I don't know. I can see it would turn out like those bad karaoke videos for a while though, because like, no one would give them the rights. So it just would be yeah. terrible fake <laughs> things. I like, think I should have done it. Oh, I don't know what I love most about. I can't really remember anything about the eighties. I remember Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but is that early nineties? Uh, I think that was. I think it might have been late 80s and then early 90s. Like, there was a lot of cartoons that span that decade gap. Yeah, like, kind of cool going, you know, what is Michelangelo? Which is pizza? DuckTales was 80s. No, I guess that was 90s too. Oh, man. Yeah, everything was 90s. Ninja Turtles was 87. What? 87 is when Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and DuckTales was, yeah, 1990. I would have liked to have seen him um, do like a dance dance revolution type battle except to 80s moves, so he had to replicate 80s moves. And also, oh, he yeah, had to be wearing leg warmers while doing it. <laughs> yeah, and a headband. headband. And a headband. <laughs> and they had to be bright coloured, preferably pink. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> One of the final performances should have been here's a like weird science. Go back into the movie of weird science and actually shag that hot chick because it not, <laughs> and like lasts longer than twenty minutes. And if you could do that, then you get the key because if they've been gunting the whole time, they're not gonna last long. <laughs> Clean it up, Maud. Okay, I'm gonna get some water. Like this is a different book again. This is back to the yeah, we're talking about before. <laughs> I was surprised that they didn't mention E.T. Yeah, I'm pretty quite sure that wasn't in there. Or if it was, it was only oh. passing. Brief. Yeah, I don't I remember. It was, it was brief. They did mention it somewhere. Oh, they did? They did? Yeah, I think. I'm sure. Uh, what I miss? Every Riveting discussion. <laughs> Riveting oh. discussion. We spoke about Emmy, briefly. Emmy, is your dog still um, going nuts, so under you? Yeah, they both are, yes. Oh, <laughs> what kind of dogs do you have? <laughs> wow, hey, Audrey, hang on. Twice as many views if they're cats. This is Watson. Oh, it's a dog. He's so cute. <laughs> oh, my God. And this is Boris. Oh, oh they're adorable. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like they should be the next gods book club. Yes. Can we get the little bow ties that say Geek Bomb? We're getting Do married we? at the end of the year and we're putting tuxes on them. 
Oh, yes. It's oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, <okay. laughs> There I are can't also handle all the cute that's on the internet. Sometimes it <laughs> just get lost. <laughs> cute so, puppy! Guys, do we want to try and figure out a rating for this book? We've kind of discussed in minor details the strengths and weaknesses. Let's all come up with uh, one strength each and one weakness each and figure out what the overall rating Geek Bomb will classify this book. I'll start. Okay. Oh. So the strengths, the strengths obviously were the nostalgia. It doesn't matter what degree of nostalgia you fall into, you do find something in there that uh, creates satisfaction whilst reading it. But the negative for me would be, and I said it before, playing up the elite geek syndrome. I'm sick of that shit. Cool. Tara. <laughs> cool. Um, so, yeah, I think the positive for me was just in general being imagining those worlds and, and the possibility of, of being able to do that in the future. I think that was the thing that drew me to it. And then the negatives would it was just the writing in general, I think. It was it was his first novel. He it's not the you know, it's not the greatest book in terms of writing, so that was probably the only downside that I found. And mm -hmm. uh, do we are we doing ratings? Because I, I don't know, I'd probably give it like a six out of ten. Six? Six six and a half out of ten. I liked it, okay, but I, I can't get over bad writing. Like I, I just it's one of my the biggest pet peeves I have. If it's not well written, I can't I can't deal with it. Right. I've never I, read I, Aragon, and I will not ever. Ah, uh, see, I have. I haven't read Bursinger yet, though. Um, I can't do it. I, I read one chapter, and I just refuse. refuse. I, I actually projectile vomited, vomited on Fifty Shades of Grey. There you go. Oh yeah, yeah, I tried that one too. But then it was no. good because I was able to use the book to then mop it up and then threw it away. And then um, yeah. Yes. Okay, well I'm going I'm going seven and a half. Let's well write down in the in the notes comment what it is. Lord. Are we gonna like average them all out? Yep. Okay. Alright, well for me the strengths were I think just that it was quite an entertaining story overall. It was easy to read, um, it was entertaining um, from the start to the finish. I was never bored. I didn't really want to put the book down. Um, yeah, and yeah. the weaknesses was just that the references could just be too cheesy and too over the top. I mean, there was like a DeLorean that was fitted out with Kit from Knight Rider with like Ghostbusters logos and stuff. <laughs> I was made just... that in real life. That's his actual car. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, <laughs> I was rolling my eyes a bit at that, but I'm going to give it 7 out of 10. 7? Oh, and I'm pretty no. sure with that car, like, I'm sure a lot of other geeks would be offended is it would be like too much of a crossover. People would be like, oh my god, that's sacrilegious. How could you do that to a DeLorean? But that was why I was like, what? No. Um, okay. Amy? Okay. Um, its strengths were definitely the nostalgia I found. Um, yeah. Well, I was only born in the mid-80s, but... Um, that I still Same. remember a lot. Um, so, um, especially because I live in a country town and not a city, so it takes us a while to, you know, kind of catch up. Um, but the weaknesses were, um, I would say, probably um, the relation to the characters themselves. Yeah. And I would probably give it a seven. Seven. Alrighty. David? I think the strengths for me is definitely the nostalgia. And I really, like, I was given this book, you know, to read. And it was, I love the puzzle aspect of it. Because, like, you're trying to solve the puzzles as they're solving the puzzles. And I just, that that is what kept me, you know, keep going through the book. Just because I wanted to know, like, what the answer was. So I really like that. Um, probably the characters is one of the weaknesses. is kind of almost fan fictiony in that regard, so I'm um, yeah. It 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 was alright, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't strong like, you know, Tolkien or whatever like that. So mm. I hate giving ratings. Um probably a seven is probably a fair number. Seven? Cool. Yeah. Last but not least. Last but not least. Yeah. I'm I'm with the I'm definitely with the seven. 
because, yeah, it's not the best, but, yeah, I'm not bad. I wouldn't give it a five, but, um, yeah, no, it was it was good. I found I'm with everyone else with the nostalgia. I loved it. I actually, one of my favorite bits was how the, what is it, the supply robots were all Johnny Five. So I could just see this Johnny Five, you know, plonking along with this, this bomb and no one bashing an eyelid, but I'm like, he's so cute. I just love that kind of references and it just made me giggle and, and love it. But yeah, I found some of the things, like, yeah, relationship development and, um, yeah, even when, like, the aunt died and all, like, the, how the stacks and yeah. how it was going yeah. on, you just sort of, like, brushed over certain aspects that I think, yeah, you'd, you'd want to feel more for and you, I think with good writing and a good book, you would feel horrible for that, but it was like, eh, and I, I just think, he, yeah, bad sort of character de development and plot like that sort of stuff. So, yeah, seven. Okay, let me... Let me just get, and it's probably, it's looking in like it's going to be it's seven. It's seven. It's yeah. seven. I was going to get the, the calculator out, but I don't. I think we could average it. <laughs> Overall, it's a seven. Alrighty. See that? It's pretty good. Seven's not bad. What is the average on um, the internet? What does Check it, like does that the reads. Yeah, Otherwise, I think they score out of five. Goodreads has given this one in Guys, 4.29 4 out of 5. Okay, that's so that's about 8.5 right? out of 10. Yeah. yeah. They're loving it. That's right, well, so I bet a lot of reviews for that are just like, five stars, it had my favourite reference. Yeah. yeah. But you think that us, you know, being all geeks, that we would have that attachment to it, and a lot of people that read it probably wouldn't. So you think it would be lower? Maybe not. Yeah, but I don't know how many non-geeks would read it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it to say my my mom would just look at this and be like, "Huh? I don't understand this." Oh yeah, my my I think, um, you, I think you have to have some connection to some fandom, even if it's not the one in the book. Like, what if you have that? Like, you'll totally relate to people in a different fandom have, being obsessed over that. I think that's really the, the, the thing that you have to have to enjoy the book at all. And I think I'd relate even less if I... Because having a WoW addiction, I sort of... I remember the draw of doing quests and grinding and this online world replacing my actual world. And you know, having that addiction... I, I, so I, I related to that more, but if I didn't have that and never played WoW, be, I wouldn't have related as much. Yeah, I guess so. Cool. Okay, so any last words? Um, Let's have a quick look to see if there's any more questions. Uh, yeah. I've just... Ha! I haven't checked Twitter. Thanks, Andrew, who said, uh, gee, I come on here and all I see is Maud stuffing her face. Oh, yeah, I was having dinner. Oh, it's so late at night here. <gasps> um, were there any other questions? I'm just going to do one quick look over in Facebook and on Twitter. Sato says uh, had to had to cut the group short because Dad Judy's took over, but can't wait for the next one. Oh, that's great. Uh, I think we fit everything, guys. That was incredible. It's a good. That's a good first. Yeah, a lot club? of fun. <laughs> I'm glad it's a book club. I love it. It's great. Yeah, I was I was terrified this was not going to even stream. So yay. <laughs> yeah, this is really fun. So I'd love to have you all back. Um, obviously, this month begins the new book club. So we've got less than thirty days to read, and we've announced it already. It's the going to be Name Me the Wind, Patrick Rothfuss. Doesn't look as good on ebook. <laughs> I read it on ebook as well. I don't have it in the hard copy, but my sister's got it. <laughs> yeah, it, I gave it to my brother, and he's obsessed with it. Oh, look at you, David! All oh, over. wow, Dave's prepared. He's like psychic or something. <laughs> have you read um, Wise Man's Fear as well, Shona and Dave? I have. I actually haven't read this yet. It's been on the shelf, just you know, waiting for me no. to have some time to read Why it. Why do you know? We've just given you an excuse to read it, and you can. Uh, it's a, it's a, again, this isn't a really easy read. Just to give a bit of a premise for this one, uh, you can actually. On the Geek Bomb Shells YouTube page, I did a. I've already done a 
book review on it if you just want, with no spoilers, if you kind of want to get that. it. Yeah? Yay! Because yeah. I read it and I was just obsessed. <laughs> I was like, I've got to talk about this book! Yeah, I think I did a Tumblr blog about it, actually. I should dig that up. Ah, uh, yeah, definitely dig it up and post it onto um, the Geek Bomb Facebook or and YouTube. What is it? Well, it's just written. So I could put it on the blog, maybe. Blog. Yes, that's what I meant to say. The blog. Um, and that's a fun, easy, easy read. I'll try and get my brother in on it. Oh, hold on. Screw you, brother. You're supposed to come in tonight. Ah, oh, what a dick. <laughs> Did you give him the link? I forgot. <laughs> I gave him the book. I, I gave him the book and I went, here, buddy, I think you'll like it. And he, he's a grunter. So, like, two days later, he's like, I read it. It was, it was really good. I'm like, mm. he was supposed to be on. Anyway, um, we'll see you guys at this Google Hangout. We've got all your email addresses now, so that'll be cool. We'll have you back and we'll talk about the next one. Ooh. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to your feedback as well, so jump onto the Twitter and Facebook page and just kind of rub it in to everyone what you, um, your thoughts were. And if there's anything that we missed out, we can continue the conversation there too. Yep, and also give us your suggestions for more books in the future. Yes, because I always want to read. What's everyone reading at the moment? Harry Potter. Harry Potter. I'm rereading it, I just felt like it. I haven't oh, read it in fair so long. Enough. It's so good. I love it. I felt like that recently too. I haven't read it for a few years now. Oh, I can't weird. read it. I've literally read them like a hundred times. I don't even think that's an exaggeration. Like I can't. I can't do it again. I remember my best was when I was fifteen. I read five and seven days. That was my winter holiday. Winter holiday. Was, yeah, I was like I could not put them down. It was like crack basically. Yeah. Just I remember yeah. running out and getting the next one and yeah. wherever yeah. I could. Yeah. I did that to actually to Tamora Pierce novels, if anyone's read those. Those are yep. incredible. When I was 12, they're incredible, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that is a badass female character, that one right there. So it's funny, what I'm reading right now is young adult too, and this is what's funny about e-books. Um, you can't really tell as easily when I'm like searching in the shop, and I have a thing for <laughs> right now. So I'm reading um, Crown of Midnight. It's like a sequel to another book called Throne of Glass, um, but it's about this female assassin. So oh, it's cool. Nice. So, but it's yeah, it's for for young adults, so it's very very fast and easy to read. Mm -hmm. I'm reading um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's. Um, um, what do you call it? Autobiography. I'm also reading um, Scar Tissue, which is the lead singer of um, Red Hot Chili Peppers' autobiography. Yeah, great, great. And book. I'm also reading Game of Thrones. Always I get bored really easy, so I switch. <laughs> it's um, the best one I've ever been doing to music once is the Slash autobiography. So good. I was the last one to Guns of Roses fan. I've got one on top of that, Danny, Shug Danny Sugarman. Has anyone read Wonderland Avenue? Because same thing, when Scar Tissue was all the rage, um, gosh, this is five, six, seven years ago now, someone wow, said yeah. Wonderland Avenue, and it's um, the story of a guy, I'll never forget the first two lines, and it's on the blurb, and it's like, you know, I'm 21 years old, and I've been told I've got three months to live. Um, and he lived till all, a ripe old age. He only died a few years ago. And he was the guy who opened up the doors as fan mail. And so he started like working with these guys when he was like a young teenager. And by 19, he was managing Iggy Pop. Phenomenal book, but it takes that drug addiction to a much deeper level. I remember reading Scar Tissue and I felt like someone was pressing on my chest and I couldn't breathe because he was just in that dark, dark, drugged up state. And I was like, <clears throat> yeah. Um, but at the moment, I always read two books at any one time. I read a hard copy and a soft copy, so that when the plane takes off, I'm reading a book, and then when I'm allowed electronic, I hate I that one. Rule. I know. Apparently, they're trying to phase it out. Apparently, yep. one of the airlines has said that it's all bullshit. Yeah, it's you can have electronic. Yeah, thank God. It's a load mm. of crock. Um, so on soft copy, I'm reading The Magician. Finally, oh, by far. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm reading really fantasy novels. Yeah, uh -huh. I've had that oh, by my bedside, half yeah, read for yeah. about three oh, years because I read it on a cruise, well, well, like half of it, and then yeah, I don't, I don't know if you guys have done the same thing. I looked up the top twenty-five fantasy books, and every single list was just biased magician, magician. So I'm doing that one, and soft copy. I am, oh sorry, hard copy. I'm reading. It's the Mistborn series. Where oh, are you? Oh yep. Yeah, you've read that one, Shana? Yeah. I thought it's around here somewhere. 
Um, yeah, so I'm on the first book of the trilogy, I think I got, the box set trilogy for that one. So, And I'm really loving the unique powers in it. Um, they absorb metals and different metals release different powers. Yeah, and they do really uh, cool things with it. Really cool things with that one. So, uh, yeah, I'm about uh, two, uh, halfway through both of them at the moment. I don't really get how people can read two books at once and then I just realise that I'm doing the same thing because back at home I have the final book in the Wheel of Time series, A Memory of Light, which came out back in January but I've been travelling so much and I normally just take my e-reader with me. I've got the hard book of that. So I read a bit and then I have to travel so I, like, I put it down, I take my e-reader, I read something else. So I haven't actually finished that one yet. I've, I've bought the series of those. I brought them back. Um, I went back home to Australia and I filled up um, one of the suitcases I left behind with books. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, there's, there's bookshops in America. So, but I've already bought them. Yeah. I don't, want, I don't want to buy the same book that I haven't read and then buy it again. Anyway, that was a little complex that I had. So, yeah, lots of books to be reading. That's pretty sick. Oh, my God, your dogs are so cute. Oh. And they're right. Oh. <laughs> How old are they? These things are cute. Um, this one's 10 months. The other one is... Um, he's and there's about... a cat on the bed. Yeah. I have two cats. <laughs> I have two cats too. They're, they're well, sleeping they're... right now. I could bring them over and they would be annoyed. I said 10 months. <laughs> yeah, they're cats. <laughs> no. Boris is 7 months. Yeah. 7 and 11? <laughs> no. And you have any cats? I love your collection Sweet. behind you as well. I mean that just gigantic pile of plush stuffed toys. Yeah, a lot of those are from when I was a kid, and I've got way more, but they're hidden. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Isn't that fun? Oh, hold on. Well, I've got you guys here. <gasps> Can I show you a first look at the posters that I got from Kamikaze? Yeah. yeah. Do it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going through a Nightwing phase at the moment. I just think he's the tits, and it, so I got this one. Nice, oh, that's beautiful. Cool. Yeah, because I think that they've set up the last Dark um, Dark Knight movies to have Joseph Gordon-Levitt, perhaps. Who knows? Who knows? Second one that I got. Big fan. Big fan. Big fan. Ooh. Loving that one. Wow. So that's the standard because I need more Star Wars. And then the last one, it's Deadpool and Harley Quinn doing the Notebook. <laughs> no, um, that's no. cool. Oh my god. And that's it's so cool. cool. It's so beautiful. It says she loses her mind or he loses his mind, whatever. And my favorite part is in this bottom corner here. It's the Joker without his head. It's just been cut off. <laughs> Love it. So that's, that's my awesome. favorite one at the moment. There you go. Just add it to my geeky wall. So I've obviously got a little spot spot here. <laughs> it's looking pretty bare. Oh, yeah. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> calm you, calm you, calm you, tits. It's all behind me here. Yeah. yeah, mine is all in front of you guys. No. That's I'm at my there. boyfriend's house right now. There's, oh, there's a Modern Warfare 2 massive proposed. He works at EB Games, so he commandeers all the big... Wall. Oh, that would be Things awesome. Awesome, because I can't wait until I eventually have my place, because I've got like a big Borderlands one and a Diablo one that I'm going to get up, but it doesn't fit in my room right now. Yeah, I'm not in my place, so I have very, very bare walls. Very boring. <laughs> how, is J uh, how is Japan? Oh, it's good, yeah. I'm only here for two more weeks, um, but yeah, Japan is amazing. So we've got amazing three, we're in three countries at the moment, guys. That's pretty wicked. Global, global Geek Bomb is taking club. off over the globe, man. Geek Bomb is taking off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We knew that. All right, guys. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's late, very, very late for David and I, so we're, I'm going to call this. It's nearly 2 a.m. It was a fantastic first book club. Yeah. Really good discussing yeah. everything. Thank you for book. joining in, guys. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Spread the word. We'll get you back next time. But, yeah, head down, bums up. Name of the Wind. David, you've already got it sitting on the pile. No excuse. This has to happen. Tell your friends about it too. We'll, I'm hoping to get it double and everyone wants in on this cool thing because reading and books aren't dead. No. Never. Awesome. I'm, I'm weird because I, I just always need a hard copy of it. Like, yeah. I, I was, Especially, I don't have an e-reader yet, but um, 
I w I've downloaded a bunch of stuff onto my computer to read while I was in NZ for six months. I couldn't do it. It just didn't feel right. I just. But reading I, off I an e-reader is very different to reading off a computer screen. Yeah, I didn't think I would like it either. But get one with like the e-ink and the e-paper technology, yeah. and it's just like reading a book. It is a lot better than reading off an iPad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like Kindle Fire, and it's not the best. I scroll. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine with the iPad up, my eyes would probably start hurting after a while. Okay. I had mad migraines while I was reading this book because I was reading it <laughs> on the iPad, but I kept I tracked them. I kept going. <laughs> you trooper. Yeah. Trooper. <laughs> All right, guys. I don't know if you know how we finish things here at Geek Bomb, but you're all gonna do it. The girls know. So when we finish Geek Bomb on. We're going to do it on three. One, two, three. This has been Geek Bomb, and the bomb, bomb has, has been dropped. dropped. <laughs> David dropped the bomb. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.